women are expected to wear a burqa because the Taliban are active in this area. Next on Global Pulse. How these news outlets around the world are covering the struggle of women in Afghanistan. Women have made progress in Afghanistan, but even though they can run for office, equality is still just a dream. Hi, I'm Erin Coker. Iran's Press TV pointed out that the Taliban's treatment of women led to a justification for war. They sold the invasion as a way of driving out the Taliban while empowering the female population. But the Taliban are still in evidence, and if anything, the war is becoming more bloody and entrenched. Is the war doing more harm than good for women's rights? Afghan President Hamid Karzai has now signed a law that, in effect, returns some women to the oppression they experienced under the Taliban, as ABC News reported. The new law severely restricts the rights of Afghanistan's three million Shiite women, allowing husbands to refuse support to wives who don't obey their sexual demands and requiring women to get permission from their husbands to work. When the law was first signed in March, it sparked outrage here and around the world. Karzai withdrew it, but in the middle of a presidential campaign, it is back, an apparent attempt to win votes among conservatives. Even women who gain a measure of power can escape danger, according to this report by the BBC. Every day, when the first woman prosecutor of Herat leaves home, she doesn't know if she will see her children again. Maria Bashir is guarded round the clock. Extremists detonated a massive bomb outside her home last year. Maria, the top law officer in the province, is trying to give women human rights and equality. They were promised that under the constitution adopted by President Karzai's government five years ago, but it hasn't happened. This woman cannot get protection from her husband, a drug addict who beats her. The organization Women for Women International reports that up to 80% of Afghan women are affected by domestic violence. Nearly half of all girls are forced into marriage before 16, and 85% of women have no formal education. Only 38% of women registered to vote, but Al Jazeera found that many women see the ballot box as a key to equality. Female schools continue to be burned and attacked by the Taliban. Now, many want to fight back using the ballot boxes. Khatima proudly shows us her voter registration card. She will be using it for the first time. I got this card to vote for a president who will serve my country and people. I will vote for someone who will open schools. They're hoping by casting their ballots, their voices will be heard. But even the instrument of those voices, their voter ID cards, is exploited. Because of the conservative nature of Afghan society, women don't have to have their photographs on their ID cards. Any man could go and ask for the cards, saying, I have a number of women in the house. Al Jazeera journalists have been offered cards for sale in six different provinces of Afghanistan. It's a crime, but everyone is doing it. In order to have any power in Afghan society, some women go to extremes, as Reuters revealed in this report. Every morning, Okmina winds a turban around her head, straps on a pistol, and heads to nearby villages in eastern Afghanistan, seeking votes in the upcoming provincial elections. She cuts an unusual figure in rural Afghanistan, where women don't talk to men they don't know. She was made a tribal leader because other elders found her very brave. As an elder, she adopted their turban and pants attire, discarding typical women's garments. Women don't have rights in Afghanistan. There is a big difference between men and women. Here a man can say anything he wishes, but a woman's voice is always suppressed. Former Afghan parliament member Malalai Joya told Belfast Telegraph. Dust has been thrown into the eyes of the world by your governments. You have not been told the truth. The situation now is as catastrophic as it was under the Taliban for women. Too catastrophic for some Afghan women. The BBC reported that in the town of Herat, more than 80 women have set themselves on fire in the last 12 months. So should the media be paying more attention to the struggle for women's rights in Afghanistan? Tell us what you think. Go to our website and leave us a comment. For Global Pulse, I'm Erin Coker.
This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only US network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.